do do short theme song intro. Hello, welcome to Left of the Box News Bites. Bonjour, bienvenue. I'm Sandy. There's an election in Canada right now. If you're a Canadian and this is news to you, thank you for making Left of the Box your first stop on social media after waking up from your coma. The election was announced August 15th and election day is September 20th. This is an attempt at a power grab from Justin Trudeau. Full stop. There has been no official loss of confidence in the government, so there was no reason to call an election two years early. With another wave of COVID hitting, Justin is putting the lives of Canadians in danger because polling suggested if an election was held now, the Liberals could form a majority and would no longer need to team up with the Conservatives to prevent pharmacare, not tax the wealthy, and force striking Montreal port workers back to work while stopping anti-scab legislation. But Justin really should have done some introspection, something which is unfamiliar to people with a huge sense of entitlement, before calling this unnecessary election. And maybe, just maybe, look into and take seriously allegations of sexual misconduct by Kitchener Center Liberal MP Raj Sani. I've been introspective lately, and you know what I've learned? When you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel, it gives me the confidence I can't produce on my own. For those of you waking up from your coma, depending on how long you were out, you might have missed my emergence on Twitter, so go ahead and follow me there. And I have a hard time asking people for money, but I have no trouble pointing out the link to my Patreon account in the description box below. So, Raj Sani was elected as a Liberal MP for Kitchener Centre in 2015, shortly after complaints of his behaviour started to come out. Four staffers at a Liberal holiday party in December 2015 told Liberal officials that Raj was acting inappropriately with young women at the party. Disgraced MP for Kitchener South Hespler, former Liberal Marwan Tabera, was also at the party hanging out with Raj. The Liberal Party claimed they had no record or knowledge of the complaints from that event. Unrelated to that, Marwan was arrested April 9th, 2020 and charged with assault, one count of break and enter to commit an indictable offense, and one count of criminal harassment. Um, Kitchener, is everything all right? Is there anything you need to talk about? Anything? Hmm? Okay. The Liberal Party didn't kick Marwan out of Justin's caucus, but he voluntarily resigned. However, he didn't lose his job as an MP and has been sitting as an independent. Who votes with the Liberals all the time? To be fair, he hasn't gone to court yet, and I believe in due process and people having the right to clear their names of wrongdoing. It's not like any working class people have ever lost their jobs and reputation after being arrested and charged with crimes. Nope, never. Mm-mm, not a thing. At least he didn't sign up to run in this election. According to CBC, seven sources with knowledge of the claims spoke about four different instances of Raj allegedly making unwanted sexual advances, inappropriate comments towards liberal staffers, and being handsies at events. A former senior staffer filed a Canadian Human Rights Commission complaint against Raj last year, alleging unwelcome advances in harassing behaviour. She said her experience in Raj's office contributed to her mental distress, and she eventually tried to take her own life in his office in March 2020. Raj Sani has claimed all allegations against him are false. So here comes an election and Raj decided to run for a seat again, even with all the controversy surrounding him. The Liberal Party and Justin Trudeau, who has maintained he has a zero tolerance approach to sexual harassment, despite the fact that he has been accused of groping a female reporter back in 2000, but that was just her remembering the experience differently than him, said to Raj, sure thing, we have your back. Here is what Justin Trudeau had to say about it at a press conference on August 27th. First of all, we have demonstrated as a, a government, as a party, as you've said, David, um, that we are extremely, extremely strong on ensuring that everyone has a right uh, to being uh, in a safe workplace. 
We have improved and increased the processes available within the party, uh, within Parliament, and indeed across the public service and across the country, because no one should be in an unsafe work environment. Everyone should have access to a process to bring their concerns forward. And in this case, uh, Mr. Saini has shared uh, details about the multiple processes uh, that have been uh, gone through over the past uh, many months uh, and uh, the efforts that have been making to demonstrate that we are taking seriously every uh, single concern that is raised. And again on August 31st, when asked by a reporter if Justin believes Raj instead of the multiple women. So just to be clear, are you saying that you believe uh, your candidate and not the women? I have... I have said uh, that Mr. Saini has shared the processes. There have been uh, rigorous processes undertaken uh, that he has shared the details of. Uh, we know that it is extremely important to take any allegations seriously, which uh, we certainly have, and we always will, because everyone deserves a safe workplace. Gee, that doesn't sound rehearsed at all. Seriously, Justin, that's the best you can do? I mean... You used to be a drama teacher and this is your performance? I do a better job emoting reading from a word doc below a camera with no audience to play to than you do with your memorized lines in front of a crowd. Just watch. Everybody deserves a safe workplace. Everybody deserves a safe workplace. Everybody deserves a safe workplace? Everybody deserves a safe workplace, no? Everybody deserves a safe workplace. Everybody deserves a safe workplace. Try saying that to the frontline workers forced to work during a pandemic, Justin. This rigorous process to investigate claims of misconduct somehow didn't include interviewing the former senior staffer who came forward with the allegations of mistreatment, which initially prompted the review. The senior staffer also said she emailed Bartis Chager, the liberal candidate and incumbent to Waterloo, and she had also contacted the liberal whip, Mark Holland, the liberal candidate and incumbent to Ajax, about the complaints of Raj's behavior. Funny how all of that was overlooked. Again, in all fairness, the process may have been thorough, and Raj might be completely innocent of all allegations and is a perfectly fine person. My critique of the situation is more about Justin Trudeau's Liberal Party's handling of it than it is of Raj. Let's be honest. If it wasn't Raj, it'd be another man at some point, because this kind of alleged behavior is still far more prevalent than is acknowledged, and the systems put in place are designed to make people feel safe. They don't actually do anything to prevent predatory behavior. I'm in the camp of, believe all claims are sincere, and don't convict until there's sound reason to. But given the controversy this brings to the party, Raj should have never been approved to run again. This sends a message to women that they don't matter. Some parties won't let you run for them if you have a few tweets that can be controversial, never mind serious, unresolved allegations. The public pressure finally caught up with Raj, and on September 4th, he released a statement saying, Yeah, this is a bit long. The short of it is, I am very proud of my work for Kitchener Center, work to which I commit myself wholly, gladly, and effectively. However, continuing my campaign no longer serves the best interests of my family, staff member, campaign team, and constituents. For everyone's health and safety, I have made the painful decision to end my campaign for the 44th Parliament. Raj adds that he will be focusing his attention to challenging these defamatory false accusations. Link to the full statement is in the description box below. The Liberal Party released a statement on the 4th, shortly before Raj, saying something along the lines of, After an independent workplace review initiated last year found Sani had not committed any wrongdoing, despite everything I've just said, he was approved as a candidate. But yesterday, a review process was initiated after new information was directly provided to the Liberal Party of Canada by someone other than the senior staffer already mentioned. So... Mr. Sani will no longer be a Liberal candidate. Huh. I guess for them to take this new information seriously, the person providing it was... a man? This feels like a 
You can't quit. We fire you so hot. That shows everyone we mean it when we say we take sexual harassment seriously. If the liberals wanted to prove they take sexual harassment seriously, they should have dealt with this a while ago. Like when the complaints were first made in 2015. That would have saved a lot of women from having experiences they remember differently, as Justin might say. Speaking of Justin, this is what he had to say about Raj dropping out. Uh, you, you say people are frustrated. What do you say to those who are extremely frustrated, angry, and disillusioned with you of how you've handled this situation, including your own supporters? Emails show that concerns were raised to members of the Liberal Party at the highest echelons uh, months ago uh, and candidates, and yet he was still allowed to run. So what do you say to those people, and do you have any regrets about how you've handled this situation? Obviously, this is a far from ideal situation that we uh, no longer uh, have uh, any candidate in that riding. Um, there is going to be lots of reflections on what we could have, should have done differently. But my primary concern in this is making sure that we have a process that we can apply rigorously in every different situation. And that is what we put in place over the past years, both within our party, within Parliament, and we can only apply that process and reflect on, are there ways to improve that process? And I can't even talk about the details of what was put forward, what happened on this allegation or that allegation. Suffice it to say that we had a process that was rigorously followed, which is an unsatisfactory answer. And I understand people being angry about it. I'm pretty frustrated about the whole thing myself. That's what frustrates you, Justin? Being down a man during an election? Not the multiple women who have come forward with claims only to be treated as a burden to your party? That doesn't bother you, the preventable harm inflicted on these women? Do you know what frustrates me, Justin? Entitled privileged men covering for and defending other entitled privileged men. Raj running for the seat demonstrates the entitlement he felt he had to it. No one is entitled to the chance of being a candidate. More better suited, dedicated, worthy, and deserving people have been denied that opportunity for far less. And the reason he felt he could run again is because privileged men rarely feel the need to think of others and they get away with acting poorly. Do people need reminding? Justin Trudeau has worn blackface multiple times. Are people hearing what I'm saying? He wore black faces. That happened. This is not okay, yet all people in his party ever do is dismiss it as boys just having fun and while there were people of color in the room at the time and they didn't seem to care, so what's the big deal? When asked how many times he has worn blackface, he said he didn't know. I guess he wasn't in the market of teaching counting. In one of the pictures, you can see he even painted his legs and appeared to have stuffed his pants. He has never been held accountable for his actions. He has never appeared to be sorry for the harm he has caused or owned up to the lies he tells. And people keep letting him. Why? Because the liberals have the best policies. Only they don't. If you look at the voting records, you'll find it's not the average person's interest they have in mind. It's the interests of other entitled, mostly men, mostly white, mostly wealthy people they care about. These people with privilege are never held accountable for what they do, and then people wonder why things aren't getting better for the average person and why things keep getting worse for people living with disabilities, poverty, or a part of marginalized groups. They could never get away with what they do if they had working class jobs. It's ridiculous when you spell it out and put what they do in another context. Houseless people are beaten and their homes destroyed when they've harmed no one. Indigenous peoples have their children taken away from them for made-up reasons. People with disabilities are told to be grateful for what we have, and if we don't like it, the privileged will be more than happy to help us apply for medical assistance in dying, because it's easier to deal with and less of a threat to their way of life. How do people not see what is happening in plain view? Don't wait for it to become your problem. You have the chance to vote to change the system now. Okay, so where does this leave Kitchener Center? 
Raj stepped away from his campaign September 4th. The last day you could take your name off the ballot was August 30th. In essence, there is no liberal candidate for that riding. However, people can and many will still vote for him, as has happened in other instances of candidates dropping out mid-campaign. The absent candidate sometimes receives thousands of votes. Raj will get votes because there are lots of people who are unaware of what's happening in the political world and will have no idea he's not in the race. Some will see liberal by his name or remember him from last time and vote for him. There will also be people who are aware of what happened and will vote for him in a form of protest. Perhaps they feel he wasn't treated fairly or they think he still has a chance of winning if he gets the most votes. If he were to win, what would most likely happen is a special election, similar to when an MP leaves their position midterm. So Kitchener Center would be in for another election fairly quickly with a new, rigorously vetted liberal candidate. But what is far more likely is one of the other candidates will win. Here are the election results for Kitchener Center in 2019. As you can see, the Greens' Mike Morris lost by only around 6,000 votes. In one election cycle, he was able to bring his party up to second place from fourth. He stands a really good chance of winning this time. So long as this video from the Greens' leader, Anime Paul, doesn't have a huge impact on him. Uh, but I'll tell the people of Canada that if you want a real plan, one that is going to grow our economy, that is going to put us at the front of the uh, competitive green economy of the future, help us to join the green rush, then the only option in this election for you is the Liberals. And you can count on us to work cooperatively and collaboratively with every party on that. The next day, she tried to brush it off by saying she misspoke because she was tired and hungry. I know when I'm tired and hungry, I sometimes say out loud in front of a group of people, you know, any maskers they've gotten a bad rep. They believe in science, Facebook science, but it's still science. And they also don't like Justin Trudeau, so maybe we should support them more. Being tired and hungry doesn't explain what anime said. From the outside, it looks like people, including the leader of the Greens, are trying to sink their party. And it's working. They're polling in last place. The PPC is doing better than them. This reminds me of when the Ontario Liberals, right near the end of the last provincial election, saw that they were losing and declared they weren't going to win. It's almost as if they were trying to help the Conservatives win in order to keep the NDP out. They'd rather have a party in charge of Ontario that would fail to increase their chances of winning next time, rather than one that would succeed and keep them out of power. Also, where is Doug Ford? Notice how quiet he is right now. Interesting how he's not saying anything against the Liberals or showing support for the Conservatives. It's almost like he has some sort of backroom deal going on with Justin. <laughs> not that Doug would ever do anything like that. Nope. Nuh uh. Not his style. Seeing the NDP surge in the polls, it feels like Anime is trying to get her base to vote Liberal to keep the NDP down. Why are all the parties so afraid of the NDP winning? Worried that when people start getting programs and policies that help, the establishment will suffer? Worried that their privilege will be taken away? Regardless of why anime did this, it will hurt good faith green candidates like Mike. Wait, let me check my bubble. Let's see. I'm on political Twitter, make political videos, read political news, and I've seen very few mentions of this clip. The number of people paying attention to politics like me is roughly... Oh, <laughs> never mind. This should have little to no impact on Mike's campaign. Mike is one of those rare instances in elections where people are voting more for the candidate than they are for the candidate's party. The NDP's candidate for this riding is Bizan. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. She is a wonderful, passionate person and has been part of the community for a long time. To learn more about her, click the link in the description box below. The Conservatives and People Party of Canada also have a candidate, but if you're watching my channel, you're not interested in voting for them. There is also a candidate for the Animal Protection Party. More about them and the other parties in my next video. So to wrap all of this up, Male privilege is still rampant in politics. Justin was so arrogant about his popularity that he called an unnecessary election costing millions and risking the lives of people only to quite possibly lose the power he so desperately wanted. And no matter how much he tries to paint himself as a feminist, his actions or lack of them reveals his true character. It's always believe all women as long as it's happening in other parties. 
If you're a liberal watching this, again, welcome back from your coma, but please look at the voting records, look at his actions. It takes no effort to say the words you want to hear, but it takes sacrifices and work to give you the world you want to live in. The liberals have proven over and over again, they aren't the party to give you what you want. Now ask yourself, are you subscribed to my channel and have you hit that like button? Remember, sacrifices and work, it doesn't take much to click buttons and share this video. I'm sure some of your liberal and conservative friends and families will love my content. Twitter, the platform people sacrifice their soul to be on, follow me there. In the comments section, it takes no effort to leave the words the algorithm wants to hear. And please, if you can, become a Patreon. I'm on disability and my checks cover rent and little else. I need your help to keep making the videos that helps others become aware of what's happening in Canada. A huge thanks to the folks who have already become patrons. Link in the description box below. As always, get informed, get involved, and together we can make a difference. Salut, à la prochaine. Thank you for watching and stay tuned. I'm Sandy, wishing your tomorrow is better than your today.